terms related to the machines this falls under the unit of simple machines and their importance under the theme of energy so let's begin with this students you have already learned that machines are everywhere right we use them every day knowingly or unknowingly true now if we do not know what terms are used to describe the motion we will not be able to understand machine and how to tackle or understand their mechanism their working so before learning about simple machines we need to know some important terms linked to simple machines so let's start by defining some of the terms and then we'll move on by applying them to different regions okay so let's start with defining the first definition is called effort now whenever we are doing a task we put an effort right but in terms of machine we give it a proper definition so effort in terms of simple machines is defined as the force applied on a machine to do some mechanical work let's say i'm using a lever to open a lid as seen here right this is my lever now i am using a lever to open a lid of a can now when i'm doing this the effort that my hand is putting the force that it is applying on the machine so that it can do the task of opening the lid that is my mechanical work that is defined as effort in terms of simple machines okay students it is mentioned or referred as e so whenever e is written in terms of simple machine it means effort The second definition is load. Load is defined as the weight moved or the resistance overcome by a machine in doing some mechanical work. Now again let's go back to the same example. In this case the lever or the spoon was doing the task of opening the lid. So the lid is the load in the example. So what we define load as the weight moved or the resistance in this case the lid might not be very heavy but it is giving some resistance it is not ready to get open right so what the lever is doing the lever is overcoming oh sorry overcoming the resistance given by the lid this is defined as load and it is represented by the letter capital l okay the third is a new definition that is a fulcrum now when we understand fulcrum we will get to know another kind of or a system in which simple machines are put a fixed point or a axle around which a machine turns is doing a mechanical work now let's say we talk about seesaw right so a seesaw is like what it has a straight bench or a straight rod of wood a plank right a plank when we put something in the center this something on which it is resting and it is making a to and fro motion up and down motion on the two edges about the two edges this is defined as my fulcrum this fulcrum is referred as or represented by capital f okay students there are some more definition linked with the previous definition now we already defined effort and load right now depending on when we know what is effort and what is load we define effort arm and load arm these are definition number 4 and 5 the effort arm is defined as the perpendicular distance between the effort point that means where you are putting the effort and the fulcrum of a machine now fulcrum is the point or the basis the excel as we defined here it is the point or the excel around which the force is being applied right in the previous case i'll just rub this will mention only the 
इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है वी आर टेकिंग द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉट इज एफर्ट वॉट इज लोड एंड वॉट इज फॉलक्रम लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जाम्पल आर स्पून वॉज एक्टिंग लाइक द लीवर राइट द फोर्स दैट द हैंड इज पुटिंग इज वॉट इट इज द एफर्ट राइट द लिड इज अलाउंग और गिविंग सम रेजिस्टेंस दिस इज माई लोड राइट वॉट एल्स वॉज गिवेन द फलक्रम नाउ माई लीवर और माई स्पून इज टेकिंग इज फिक्सड ऑन अ पॉइंट इट इज फिक्सड ऑन द एज ऑफ द कैन इट सेल्फ राइट द एज इज माई फल क्रम ओके नाउ इन दिस केस वी वर डिफाइनिंग एफर्ट आर्म सो द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द फलक्रम एंड द पॉइंट ऑफ एफर्ट इज नथिंग बट माई एफर्ट आर्म ओके लेट्स हैव अ डेफिनेशन अगेन the perpendicular distance between the effort point and the fulcrum of a machine is defined as the effort arm on the other hand when we talk about load arm the perpendicular distance between the load point and the fulcrum of a machine is defined as the load arm right so if we go back in the same problem the load and the fulcrum also has some distance this is my load arm okay let's have it and understand this in this figure in this figure we have a plank okay and this point here this point here it is giving me a fixed point this is defined as my fulcrum now there is a load put here let's take uh, let's see it as a as a seesaw so let's say this is my hand and my hand is my seesaw this watch the point where my watch is is the point of fixed point that is called the fulcrum right now if one person comes and sit here right so what will happen to my my system my system will move in that direction right so this person here is actually the load now to keep my system in equilibrium to keep my system in straight line what i have to do i have to apply a effort in the opposite direction of my load so my load is putting the force in the downward direction that means i have to put the effort in the upward direction so according to or by definition we already understood what is effort what is fulcrum and what is load there were two more terms students the other two terms were the effort arm and the load arm right now in this figure what is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum this distance is defined as the effort arm and what about the other definition the distance between the load and the fulcrum is defined as the load arm okay students let's move with some more definitions here input energy so which definition we are talking about number 6 the energy supplied to the machine for doing mechanical work is defined as input energy how much energy i am putting in the into the machine to perform a particular task is defined as input energy on the other hand the output energy is the useful work done now this useful wo word is very very important the energy i am putting into the machine to do a task is my input energy the machine will convert that input energy into some output the output energy is the useful amount of work done or the energy pr produced by the machine okay now there is another definition and then we'll come to the practical implication why did we actually understood input energy and the output energy there is the definition number 8 that is the principle of machine the principle of machine is defined as and it is only defined for an idle machine it is defined as the output energy is always equal to the input energy that means the principle of machine tells us 
that the output energy should be equal to an input energy. That means the amount of energy I am putting into the machine, the machine should give me an output of an equal amount of energy. But this is only applicable to ideal machine. Now what do you understand by ideal machine? Ideal machines are those machine students that have those movable parts which are weightless and frictionless. That means they neither have weight nor have friction which is practically impossible, right? So ideal machine is defined as this but the machines we use in our daily life cannot be ideal. They will have weight and they do have friction. Right students? Now we define another term and this term is defined as the efficiency of a machine. The ratio between the output energy, now we are not talking about the ideal case, we are talking about actual machines. Then the ratio of the output energy of the machine to the input energy is defined as the efficiency of the machine. It is referred with the small letter n. Okay. Now, efficiency as per the definition is given output energy upon input energy, right? Or I can also mention it is equal to work done by the machine upon work done on the machine. The work I am putting on the machine is in the denominator and what is the output? The work done by the machine is in the numerator. If I talk about percentage efficiency, it is referred by a eta, okay? And it is equal to output energy upon input energy into 100, okay? Now, for ideal machine and actual machine, the difference is right in front of you. For an ideal machine, the output work is equivalent to input work as this is how we define. If the machine is not losing any energy in terms of heat or in terms of friction, in terms of moving the parts it has, then the output energy will be equivalent to the input energy. For instance, if I take 100 joules of energy and I put that much of energy on in a machine, what will I get? I will get an output of 100 joules only. That means the efficiency is 100%. But in actual cases, we do not have ideal machines. We have machines that have weight and that, are, that have friction. So, in this case, the work output is not equivalent to the work input. That means, say if I put or do a work of 100 joules on a machine, my output will be let's say 90 joules only. So, in this case, my efficiency will be 90 upon 100, that means 90 percent. Where does that 10 percent goes? That 10 percent goes into the machine. That machine loses that much of energy by in terms of heat or other forms. So, this is the actual case we understand but efficiency is defined as the ratio itself. The last definition is the mechanical advantage. We refer it by MA. Okay. Now, it is defined as the ratio between the useful load moved by the machine and the effort applied to do so is called the mechanical advantage. Now, we do a work mechanically and we do a work mechanically using a machine. There must be some advantage why we are bringing the machine into the system, right? So, when we bring the machine, how much useful load moves by the amount of same effort is defined as my mechanical advantage. In terms of numerical, we can say if L is the useful load, E is my effort, then MA is nothing but L upon E. So, these are some of the important terms that you should know before you understand simple machines and their working. Okay, students, there is one last thing that you must remember. The mechanical advantage as well as the efficiency, both these things of a machine has no units. Why they don't have units? You can take it into consideration. Both are nothing but ratio. One is the ratio of the output energy with the input energy, the energy we put in the machine, right? And the other is the ratio of the load upon effort. So, if both are ratios, they have no units. 
right that is why we take them without any units okay students thank you